What's up, Custom? Welcome to One Night. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, every year we do something called Renegades, and that's a night where we find some of our students who are living out 1 Timothy 4.12 and have them speak into your life. So a few of our custom students are gonna be joining Pastor John a little bit later on. We also have some amazing worship planned. Um, we also have a few friends who were with us last time, and we also have a new friend joining us who is sure to bring a little bit of spice into your life. So thank you for joining us and let's get going. Hey, John. Oh. Hey, big guy. Hey, hey, ma hey, hey man. What? What's, what's going on, man? Oh, sorry, I'm right in the camera right there. Yeah. Let me, all right. Let me pull this right behind you here. Yeah. What's been going on lately, man? You know, just uh, checking, 
checking stuff. Checking, and, uh, you know, checking the interwebs out there the, on the, your device. The interwebs, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, well, how you doing, man? You're back again. I'm back. Hey, speaking of backs, you want to know how my back is from the last time? Oh, that's right. Yeah, what, like, you all right? I'm okay now. Uh, but as you remember, if you didn't see it, you can go back and rewatch it. But I took a fall like Humpty Dumpty. You, yeah. Took a great fall. And uh, in the midst of my pain, I yelled, it's a contusion, or I said something about a contusion. Mm-hmm. I remember. Turns out I really did have a contusion. Full <laughs> disclosure, I didn't really know what that word meant when I said it, but I thought that was right. So I did have a contusion, bruised my tailbone, um, but I uh, found out on the way home, I went to CVS Minute Clinic. Okay. And they uh -huh. confirmed my suspicions, and they just sent me home uh, with some Advil and a Sprite. Well, I got the Sprite on my that's, own. That's they, good. Didn't, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Because yeah. uh, I need the fizz to swallow the Advil. Oh, nice. You need, yeah. you need a comfort food, comfort drink. Comfort food, comfort drink. The, so. Pastor yeah. John! Yeah. Pastor Hey, hey. Hi. Oh, hey. Oh. All right, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Uh, is that who uh, I think it hi. is? Hi. Hi, yeah, hi. Is that who I think it is? I I'm Sparkle. Um, I, uh, Pastor Greg needs you. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I was outside and like he... Now. I think Pastor Greg works here, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's uh, like the now? boss. And now? he was like, specifically, John, home, yeah. I need him. Oh. He's like, please come. Yeah. You probably better hey, get you on. Can I borrow your... Can I borrow your... Uh, yeah, yeah you man. Right Sweet. Yeah, be, yeah, get right on it, man. All right, man, thanks. Yeah, you know how to ride a bike. All right, hey, yeah. don't, don't do anything without me, all right? Yeah, Just no, no. Let, yeah. He's riding like right. that. He rides okay. every weekend. Right That's what he's riding like. Hey! Hey, uh... I need to tell you, I love T-shirts, and I love custom T-shirts, and I've been seeing you on the trivia nights on Thursdays. Yes, And yes. Uh, I just have, if anybody else has been enjoying it as much as me, <laughs> I'd like to meet that person because I love everything. Now, I'm not really a trivia guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, well, I then am, why are you watching it? But it's fine. It's fine. Well, because yeah. of the custom T-shirts. Yeah. I mean, I make this one one night, get it one 1 p.m. 1, 1 p.m. I was yeah. wondering if that Clever. was like, yeah, I was wondering what that meant, but I get it because yeah. a.m. p.m. Yeah, right. yeah. PM I'm not a time. trivia guy, but I am a wing king. Uh, Tuesday nights at my local wing shop, wings, wings, uh, wings. So yeah. I'm the wing king. I got a trophy and everything. Yeah, come on, pull up yeah, a couch. Yeah, I thought I'd just sit with you. I'm a big fan. I've been watching you uh, last one night. I was really worried about your contusion. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and actually when you reached out for Josh Surratt. Yeah. I felt it right here in my heart. Did you? Yeah, okay. I really did. But one thing I really liked was the blesser size. And did was, you like that? I was just like wondering if there was like just a move you could show me since I'm like your biggest fan. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think I'm feeling it coming on right now. Ooh, that's the Lord. I've the seen the look of that. I've seen the look of that inflatable yeah, horse on the yeah, top there. Broke a little and bit. I just made a new friend. Uh -huh. So I feel it coming on okay. right here, Woo! right now, okay. right here, right now. We're going to call it Love your neighbor lunges, okay? Love your neighbor lunges okay, okay, because this is my neighbor and we're going to do it. So, Ray, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, Just yeah. like a good lunge right okay, here, okay. but we're going to turn and give each other. Uh, we're still, we'll, no, social distance okay. high five, okay? Yeah. Well, maybe so I should watch, move a at little At the top, what, do it. Boom. Bam. Ooh. Right. Boom. What? Yep. Oh. Boom. Boom. Everybody, That's come on, good. do it with us. Boom. Love your neighbor lunges. Yes. Here we go. Oh. Boom. Here we go. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You lied. He's on to us. Okay. Uh, He's on to us. What should we do? Um, okay. I'm going to I'm gonna go hide, and okay. uh, you figure your life out. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Ah! Ah! Ah, that's my tree. I got the horse. Don't worry. Check on Tim. Hurry. Ah! What's up, fam? Welcome to One Night, our renegade edition every year. It's, it's one of my favorite um, times of year. We, we talk with some students normally. We have them speak live, but because of COVID and quarantine and all this fun stuff that all of us are tired of, uh, we decided to do a little something different and do a little panel of renegades. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go real quick and uh, everyone just say your name. And then we're going to talk about our favorite quarantine Snack. So real quick, tell us your name. We'll go down and then we'll talk about our snack. Hey guys, my name's Anna J, and my favorite quarantine snack is goldfish. Uh, my name's Elijah. My favorite snack is whipped cream. <laughs> <So. laughs> my name is Conlon and my quarantine snack, not really a snack, is LaCroix. I just randomly became addicted to it over quarantine. I don't even like it, but yeah. <laughs> My name is Yana, and my quarantine snack is Oreos. Awesome, awesome. My favorite quarantine snack is a little thing called Heavenly Hunks. 
right here, Heavenly Hunks. Um, you can get them at the Costco, and I would, uh, I would pound bags of those things. And so we'll probably give you guys some after this and uh, see what you think. But I want to start us off with a question and, um, and then see what you guys think, see how it lands on you. So the question I have is when I say all of us are born originals, but many will die a copy, what do you, how does that land on you? What do you think? Yeah. I mean, that really hits home for me because for so long in my story, I thought I was just a copy. I didn't own my faith and I've grown up in the church. But when I realized that God created me unique, different than anyone else, and I have a unique plan, it was just humbled me so much. And so nowadays it's so easy to live like a copy. We have social media. It's easy to just follow with the lead of everyone else. But that's just what the enemy wants us to do. Yeah. Do you think that we have a good amount of examples of how to live a Christ-like life in this world? Um, thankfully, well, we have a great <laughs> Pastor John and so many people we can surround us with, but unfortunately on social media, you know, like it's all of our influencers mm -hmm. are copies of each other. Wow. And so even though we may think, wow, like they're so unique and original, they're just trying to follow the lead of everyone else. So, yeah. Anybody else real quick on that one question? Yeah. I think, oh, no, <laughs> um, social media is definitely uh, a big source for the young generation now. And I think we find ourselves copying a lot of people on there. Um, but thankfully, I think God um, just, we are all created originally specific, unique, and we just need to be true to ourselves and what, how God created us. That's good. That's good. Did you want to finish it yeah. out? I mean, how God created us, that's, that's the most important part. I feel like once we really know and understand in our hearts and our minds who we are in Christ and what, what, what Jesus has done for us, that's when we stop trying to be like the world and we start pursuing that side of our life, which is the, the much more important part of life. Yeah. You know, 1 Timothy 4.12 is our, is our key verse for custom students and really it's, it's don't let anyone think less of you because you're young, but be an example to all believers in what you say, the way you live, your love, your faith and your purity. And I really feel like that is a, being an example, really the word example, if you think about it, is influence. And that verse gives us a template uh, and, you know, of how we can live our life, how to be an example to others. When a lot of times you think about how can I influence others? What can I do to be an influence? You think you have to do, always do something like huge or grand or whatever, but really it's in what you say, the way you live, the way you conduct yourself, you know, your love, your faith, and your purity. Um, in what you say, I'm gonna ask a question here and then we're gonna kind of just popcorn around and just get some answers from, from our renegades. Um, what would you say is the importance of what you say to yourself? Do you think it affects you and others? Yeah, I think it definitely affects yourself and other people because if you constantly, your tongue is the most powerful thing. And if you're always thinking negative on yourself, then it's just gonna rub off on other people. And I honestly feel like nowadays, a lot of people just feel like they don't have a lot of confidence because they're scared to be real. And I feel like if you are yourself and you're not like everyone else, then people are going to look at you differently. And so I feel like it's very important what you say because even if you think the small joke or the small little thing you say, like it really could affect someone, whether it's positive or negative. And um, I think it's really important that you watch what you say because one thing you say can affect completely like affect someone's life whether it's positive or negative it's good it's mm -hmm. so. really good yeah. That's so I've, I've heard it said like i've heard it said like this words can be either a bullet or a seed and then the bible also says that the there's power in the tongue to bring life and death you know so in what we say there is so much weight in that you know i've also heard it said that taste your word before you spit it out <laughs> <laughs> Right, be careful what you say. Taste it before you just start throwing it out. I think sometimes we can kind of fly off the handle and just say things and then moments of regret, like seconds later, I shouldn't have said that, should have waited. Anybody else have any thoughts about in what you say? 
Yeah, I think like our talk eventually will become our walk. So like how often do we speak over each other? You're a child of God. Mm -hmm. How often do we wake up in the morning and say like, I was created for a purpose because I know that's something I definitely need to work on. And it's so, like John was saying, it's so easy nowadays to just talk down on yourself. You know, when someone gives you a compliment to be like, no, that's all you like scroll through Instagram. Like that's what <laughs> everyone comments back. So I think it takes a lot of boldness to be confident in who you are, but it's so worth it. I think a last thing, too, that has to do with um, what we're saying is actually telling people about Jesus. Like, I feel like for me, I'm more of a shy person, so um, I find it easier to more live it out rather than actually tell people about Jesus. Then I get scared and I allow the enemy to put fear into my heart. But really, the gospel is a written word. It's a story. It's something that we, that telling people can set them free. You know, I don't want people just thinking I'm a nice guy. I want them knowing that Jesus has set me free and that he'll do the same for them, you know? That's good. It's really good. Well, all right, in the way you live, let me ask this question. What are some things in your daily life that you feel like will lead to the development as a mature believer? So for me, I think when I really started growing in my faith and started pursuing God um, was when I decided that, um, you know what, I'm not going to look at whether or not God is doing something big in my life, but I'm gonna just go into sort of a spiritual training mode. And at that point in my life, I started getting up early and spending time with God before I did anything else. And at first, not a lot happened. It started to get kind of boring and routine, um, but I kept with it. And that was the beginning of, that was January, 2019. And then there was all these miracle services and crazy stuff happening in the church. And I just felt my faith explode. But the explosion isn't what started it. It was what I was doing beforehand um, in my life. So I think in the way you live really has to do with thinking of everything you're doing as training, you know? For me, every time I'm putting, putting hours in with God, you know, I don't think in this world that five minutes a day in the Bible can cut it. I think if you really want to pursue everything that God has for you, you need to be constantly training and making sure everything in your life is disciplined and pointing toward him. Yeah, that's cool. I'm reminded one of my favorite books in the Bible is Nehemiah. And I just, I love every time I read it, there's just something new that pops out. But I've often heard it said that um, short prayers are effective for someone who lives at the throne. <laughs> and so when Nehemiah was going to the king, he had spent days fasting and praying. And then when he went to the king, he had a moment where he had to whisper a prayer for favor. and got the favor of the king. And so I love, I love when you said like, I, you didn't necessarily say it this way, but everyday boring, ordinary routines are mandatory for our success. You know, and, and that's like creating that discipline. We have a few athletes on this stage and I know that you have to put in work, right? You have to put in practice. And sometimes the practice is boring because you just wanna play the game. But in order to get to the game, you've gotta be able to have that practice time to just, prove yourself and learn and grow and everyday boring routines. And a lot of times in the spiritual walk in our walk with God, creating a devotional time, a, a time set aside with God can sometimes feel like it's boring. Yeah. But when you put that work in, that time in begins to grow. Mm. Are the thoughts around that question? Um, you just to add to that, I feel like that was major because nowadays like saying I'm a Christian is a trend and it's something that's like popular. And I feel like a lot of people don't really understand, like if you really ask someone, what does it mean to be a believer? What does it mean to be a Christian and a disciple? Like their answer, it will determine like what you, what the real deal is. And I feel like nowadays, like I said, people are afraid to be original because they don't want to stand out of the comfort, comfort zone. And you, so like you said, with the game situation, everyone wants to play the game, but they don't want to practice. But you play how you practice. So if you go in the real world and you haven't had any time with God or not even God, like if you just think about the normal things that you do, if you haven't had, if you're applying for a job and you have not studied what that job, what you need to do for that job or how to prepare and you just go apply for it, then you're not gonna understand like anything and everything's just gonna be confusing and you're gonna be lost. So translating back to Jesus, if you don't spend time with him, when you go in the real world, it's gonna take a second for someone just to say one thing, to question everything. And so 
I mean, nowadays people's voices are so important to people when you have one big voice that is the whole, it's, I mean, God's voice is the only voice that you should really pay attention to, but nowadays people listen to everyone's. But if you can listen to your friends and other people's, then you should be able to listen to God because God is the all, God is never gonna leave you astray. And so I say all that to say, if you put in the time with God and you go in the real world and not even the real world, but then you keep going in your faith, then you're gonna be stronger than ever. And no one can say anything. You're gonna have God's word in your heart and no one can say anything to make you think otherwise. So I definitely think that's really important. And five minutes a day isn't gonna cut it. It's gonna take hours and days and consistency is the key. So I think that's really important. That's good. That's good. I have a couple of thoughts and then we'll move on to the love, the love part. But one of the thoughts is that we're not really called to memorize Jesus. We're called to become like Jesus. Mm, that's good. You know, um, instead of just memorizing, which is good. And I want to challenge all of us to memorize his word because when you need those moments to recall it, it will come to your, your mind and it'll help you in, in moments where anxiety hits or where you need strength. Um, but we're not called just to memorize Jesus. We're called to become like Jesus. And then the other one is Satan isn't scared of you reading your Bible. He's scared of you living it. Mm, and I think in, in, especially in today's climate, in the world we live in right now, today, um, you living and being like Jesus, loving like Jesus, um, looking like Jesus, seeing like Jesus, see as he sees, because the Bible says that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. What if we had a generation mm. that looked at the heart? Yeah. That looked at the heart. So that probably leads us into love, mm. right? Mm. So I'm gonna ask this question, how can you encourage others to point more away from their own lives and towards those they come in contact with? What example did Jesus set for us? Yeah, and loving others well really starts with humility. And 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range all across the earth, searching for hearts that are fully devoted to Him. And it doesn't say He's looking for the strongest or the wisest. It just says He's looking for those who will chase after Him in humility. Mm -hmm. And humility isn't saying I'm less than, it's saying He's greater than. So He's greater than my reputation. He's greater than my popularity. He's greater than my fear. He's worth laying it all down and loving the people that are really hard to love. And that's just what Jesus did. He laid down His reputation and served those who nobody else wanted to serve. He laid down His relationships just to pursue the Father and ultimately he lays down his life so that we could walk in freedom today and if our generation will serve in humility when no one's watching when the cost is high and when it's hard to understand we will truly be dangerous for the kingdom you see she just memorized the scripture y'all that's <laughs> awesome that's so good what else anybody else thoughts around that I just think um, like God he loves us unconditionally yeah. and even though it's impossible for us um, to love unconditionally, um, like our love fluctuates at different times, but we just have to constantly put out love onto all people, doesn't matter who. That's good, that's really good. I, you know, love is, is not just a set of words, it's a demonstration, mm -hmm. right? It's action. Um, I can say I, I love pizza. <laughs> I used to love pizza when I could have dairy. Yeah. I could say I love burgers. I could say I love Heavenly Hunks. You know what I'm saying? A little shout out to Heavenly Hunks. Want sponsorship as soon as I can. Um, but that's different than the action of going the extra mile for somebody. Yeah. Again, seeing as Jesus sees and loving as Jesus loves. And um, that's so good. So good. Uh, your faith. Ask this question about your faith. So in what you say, the way you live, your love, your faith, what are some practical examples of how to live out our faith? Mm -hmm. um, like what Colin said, it's not just five minutes reading your Bible. It's going after God every day. It's being an example in how you worship. You know, at church, well, has been open for a bit, but <laughs> when we go back to church, you know, don't be afraid. Go all out for Jesus. Just worship as hard as you want and how to, as hard as you can. And it's just, being an example for the younger kids, like I'm going into my senior year, I'm gonna be discipling the, like the juniors, they're right under me, um, and all the younger high school students, even my, um, my younger sister, she's going, she's in middle school now, discipling just the younger generation and being there for them. Hmm. It's good, it's good. Anyone else? Yeah, I think like one quote I really love is now yells louder, but later lasts longer. So like, 
living in faith, like eternity is this big and then high school and this life is this big. And the amount of impact you can have on eternity in this time, don't underestimate it. No matter where you are on your walk with God, like he wants to use you in big ways. You've heard me say it a few times um, that Satan has one agenda, to keep the lost, lost. Mm -hmm. To keep the broken, broken. Scared, scared, you know what I'm saying? But going back to keep the lost, lost. Faith is, um, it's meant to be shared, right? So the, the act of giving your life to Christ, that's a personal decision, you know? And then we talk about baptism in water, which is going public with your faith, saying I'm identifying with Christ's death, burial and resurrection because I want people to see that. I want to be an example of that. Um, I think about, I'm, I'm working on a series, we're probably gonna call it Suit Up about the armor of God, but I think about the shield of faith. A lot of times when we think about shields, it's something we hide behind, but in, back in Roman culture, it was something that they pushed to advance. They pushed forward. And so our faith shouldn't be something that you just hide behind, but it's something that pushes us forward and we advance um, forward. So um, again, a template. Being an example, some versions of First Timothy say set the example. When it says set the example, being an example is actually like the action piece, right? But when you say set the example, it's, it's almost saying here is a template of how we should live. Super easy way of being influential in how we speak, what we say, and the way we live, how we conduct ourselves, um, and our love towards others, our faith, but also purity. How do you remain pure? How do you handle it when your friends are engaging in topics, events that will com compromise your values uh, around purity? Yeah, at Winter Weekend, we talked a lot about guardrails and like having guardrails set up so that when that temptation comes, you know, okay, that's not what God has. And for some things, it can look a little bit specific to you, but you know, there's also things in the Word that are so clear cut. So I feel like back to what we were saying about being in the Word, you know, when we're armored up, we know what's truth and we can discern what's the enemy's lie and what's not. But I think nowadays it's so easy, like it's popular now if you're a Christian to post about scripture, it's popular to even be public, but is it popular to really repent? Is it popular to know what you're speaking? So I feel like that's just really important for a generation. To yeah. You know, this is one area in the Bible that um, it doesn't tell us to fight. You know that? Like it tells us to flee. Um, that kind of temptation, sexual temptation uh, around our purity, it doesn't tell us to fight that. It tells us to flee, to run, to get away. Um, so do you listen to the voice of the world or do you listen to the voice of the word? I think a lot of times we've got a group of people, a generation that, again, feelings is rampant right now. And it's always been rampant in, in our lives. Even, even I face feeling moments and, and where do I allow feelings to overwhelm my faith? But we've got to begin to figure out how to get on lockdown, putting our faith above our feelings. Any other thoughts to wrap up 1 Timothy 4.12, renegades, being an example? I think for the, the purity part of it, um, it, it goes back to what we were talking about before about the, the training in your faith because there are times that are gonna come where you're tempted. And the only way to have the strength to flee is to have those verses memorized, to have that scripture in your heart, to have that Christ-like mind that you developed beforehand that will give you the strength to turn and flee from that temptation. Yeah. I think doing relationships in a godly way is one of the best ways for us to preach the gospel. It's one of the best ways for us to show the example. Um, it's just, I think it's, it's just crucial. It's crucial for us. Again, what you say, the way you live, you love faith, purity. All of those five pieces should work in tandem together. And I love this, this one statement and then we'll, we'll close out and give some love to our, our renegades on the chat, but uh, purity leads to security. Um, a secure heart, a secure mind, uh, a secure life um, and a confidence, a confidence in, in who you are and, and, and how God has designed you and who God has designed you to be. And, and, and so, well, why don't we do this? Just, man, on the chat, just say thank you to all of our renegades. And we've also had other renegades, uh, students from all the campuses who filmed themselves 
um, sharing what First Timothy 4.12 means to them, that we're going to do a little renegade series on Instagram and social media. And so we'll kind of kick that out. So we've got more renegades who are going to be doing some things. But just give some love to these guys on the chat and just tell them thank you. Um, but guys, thank you so much for being an example and setting the example for this ministry. This is going to be a year where we're gonna be chasing influencers. We're gonna be chasing students who want to be an example in their schools, in their families. And so if that's you, let us know in the chat because we wanna start doing some things with you, start discipling, start equipping, and start just uh, seeing this ministry advance, not hiding behind the shield of faith, but pushing it forward. Love you guys, tell them thanks.
What a great night hearing from some of our renegades. I hope you were as challenged as, as I was. Um, really looking at their lives, they are students who have decided to put their lives in God's hands. You know, it's all, it's all about whose hands you're in. So this basketball in my hands is probably worth 20 bucks, but a basketball in, let's say Michael Jordan's hands is worth millions. Or this slingshot in my hands is probably a kid's toy um, or I'll break a window, um, but it's just, it's, it's a toy. It's just a little slingshot, but a slingshot in David's hands took down a giant. Or maybe even like this stick. The stick in my hand will probably hurt somebody and more likely myself, but a stick in Moses' hands, it parted the Red Sea so a group of people could pass to safety. And my favorite one is this. A nail in my hands could probably produce a birdhouse or build something for my home, but a nail in Christ's hands brought salvation. See, it's all about whose hands you're in. And so tonight I wanna to challenge us and challenge you, whose hands are you in? Are you in the world's hands or are you in Christ's hands? So as we enter into a time of response, uh, we've got the chat that is live with leaders who are here for you to pray with you, pray for you. So please utilize that. And if at any moment, at any point to, tonight during tonight's message, being challenged by some of our renegades and being challenged by this part right here of putting your life in Christ's hands, we would love for you to text BEGIN to begin that relationship with Christ. Text BEGIN to 320-320. Why don't we pray together? Father, we love you and we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made, that the nails that pierced your hands were for us, that you died to give us life. And so Lord, tonight, as I pray for our students who are watching online at different states and different towns, God, as, as we rededicate our lives, as we may have made a decision for the first time to begin that relationship with you, or as we're being challenged to to be an example in what we say, the way we live, our love, our faith, our purity. God, we give you our life. We put our life in your hands. In your name I pray, amen.
Well, thank you all so much for joining us uh, tonight. Just a few quick announcements before y'all leave. Don't forget, Rock the Summer, July 23rd through the 25th. Go to camp.fyi, get all the information, make sure you register. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing event. Also, this summer we have something called Dig Groups. If you wanna grow in your faith, get in your Bible more, um, check right down there and you'll see all the information that you need um, to get involved with Dig Groups. Um, if you made a decision tonight to follow Jesus, maybe for the first time, I want you to text the word BEGIN to 320-320 and somebody from our team is gonna reach out to you and help you start this journey with Jesus. Or maybe you wanna get connected into a small group. I want you to text the word GROUPS to 320, 320, and we'll get you connected to a small group somewhere at your campus. Um, and that's the best, best way for you guys to do community. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Hey, Patrick, 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 Patrick. Hey, hey, hey uh, 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 Pastor Greg Pastor is outside Greg. and he needs you so bad. He was like, can you please go get Judging from his body yeah. language, it's bad news, Bears Patrick. Wait, like yeah. the the pastor Greg. The pastor yeah. Greg. I think he like owns this place or runs it or something. So. He works here right yeah. now, right now. Yeah, right. he was yep. like, go get him and tell him to leave right yep. now. Oh. So okay. that's okay. what Take we're the doing. Track. You better hurry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or run. You better, hurry. You better hurry. <laughs> we can run. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even see it coming. Got, Got him, him again. Boom.